This is how I finessed over $20,000 from Yale for my summer experiences, which includes traveling around the world. This video is gonna focus mainly on my Yale funded summer activities, but I'll also give a general overview of what my summer looked like over my Yale career. Now, the intention of this video isn't to brag, well, maybe a little bit, in all honesty, is to just share some of the experiences that I've been blessed with, and maybe you could learn something or use it as encouragement or inspiration for your own summer activities. So starting off with my summer before my freshman year of college, all I really did was work at this restaurant that I've been working at throughout my high school career. It's the same restaurant where my dad worked at, where my other siblings worked at. I was a mix of a host, busboy, takeout person and food expediter. And it was just a great way to leave on good terms and still make some extra money over the summer and still be productive. Besides that, I mainly focused on just chilling and relaxing and hanging out with friends, family, you know, going to events, as well as focusing on self-improvement, such as going to the gym. After that summer, I experienced my whole entire first year at Yale. And I learned about so many different resources and opportunities that the college provides. I went to a lot of talks, meeting with advisors, talked to a lot of friends, professors. And I also did my own online research to figure out what summer opportunities does Yale provide for me because I wanted to make sure that my summers were productive and I was getting the most bang for my buck. This is why I would 100% recommend for you to be proactive and to explore the options that your school has. Every school has something different to milk, but nevertheless, you can still milk a cow regardless of its size. I took Mandarin Chinese both semesters during my first year and I heard about this program called the Light Fellowship, which is basically this program sponsored by Yale where they give you a full ride to study abroad in one of the East Asian countries to study or learn that specific East Asian language. It's pretty competitive and everybody wants to do it because you can go to Korea, Japan, China entirely for free and learn that language and also use it for credit for the language requirement at Yale. So long story short, I applied and I got, I think I got waitlisted and then flat out rejected. I really wanted to learn and develop my Chinese for many, many reasons, partly because I am Chinese, you know, my girlfriend, because I am Chinese, my girlfriend's Chinese, I want to get the credits and I also wanted to go there to like, you know, explore because I've never been and also use that as inspiration for a play that I was writing during the time. But because I didn't get in, I had to look at other options and another option that appealed to me was studying abroad in England. So just to take a step back, Yale provides this thing called the International Summer Award, where basically if you qualify financially, you get a lot of money to choose a study abroad program that partners up with Yale. You can pretty much use this for any country you want. There's a whole entire database of all the programs that you're eligible for. And I decided to choose this program called advanced studies in England Bath because one of my close upperclassmen friends went to the program, he loved it, he enjoyed it, and I would be able to use the credits from that program for my theater studies major. So one door closes and another one opens and I was able to study abroad in England for free over that summer where I learned theater in terms of like playwriting and acting and I was able to visit England for the first time and enjoy the culture, meet new people, enjoy a lot of different plays and Shakespeare and it was great. The program lasted around two months and I was falling in love with theater and entertainment and was really able to solidify my ideas for my own personal projects, such as the play I was working on, as well as my own career aspirations in theater and in film. But y'all don't care about that, y'all care about the funding of it. So in terms of the exact amount, um, so the exact amount of funding varies from person to person. There's specific ways that Yale calculates it. For instance, it depends on your financial background, the specific cost of the program. So Yale gave me $7,300. It was like a sweet direct deposit Zelle in my bank account. It was like, so I got $7,300 direct deposit into my account. The program cost was $5,200, but then I got an additional scholarship through the program itself, which lowered the cost to $4,700. And then if you subtract the two, I basically had around, let me calculate. I basically had around $2,600 to myself, but you have to keep in mind that the $4,700 covers the program and the housing, but I still needed to use the excess money for things like a round trip flight. And the excess amount of money I pretty much saved up or used for food, the gym, souvenir, and other expenses. It was a good time for me personally, for my career, for my academic education, and definitely for my wallet, not gonna lie. All right, so now for the summer going into junior year, I decided to give the Light Fellowship another try. This time I took the application a lot more seriously. You know, I, I let my teachers know in advance for recommendations. I met up with advisors. I revised and edited my essays. So fortunately enough, this time when I submitted my application, I was accepted for the Light Fellowship. This was a huge blessing because this meant that I was able to use my International Summer Award to go to England and now I'd be able to study Chinese for free. There is an exception, however. The Light Fellowship only gives you the funding if you are accepted to a specific program. This meant that there was a whole entire other application process for these specific Chinese language programs that I wanted to attend. My top two options were the Harvard Beijing Academy and the Duke Study in China program. These are very immersive programs where you go to China, you study, you know, you do all that good stuff. And luckily enough, I was accepted to both of the programs. I was really, really happy. You know, it felt like everything was happening for a reason. I'd be able to go to China, maybe meet my girlfriend's parents, a lot of great 
Detroit stuff. But then, as y'all know, based on the timeline, well, maybe y'all, you don't know. Based on the timeline, you know, COVID-19 happened, which was a huge wah wah, but, uh, you know, we continue to grind. So I ended up applying to this um, other Chinese program called the Middlebury Language School Program. And what they did is that they offered their courses online. So Harvard Beijing Academy and Duke Study in China was fully in person. So they actually canceled both of the programs, but I was able to use the Light Fellowship funding for the Middlebury, that for the Middlebury Language School online program. So this technically doesn't count as me traveling around the world because it was remote, but honestly, it was still a great and blessed opportunity. So the cost of the program was $8,800. Wait, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was $8,800 for an online Chinese summer program. And I had to submit a $400 deposit out of pocket before Yale actually sent me my money. And that's also a recurring theme. Yale was very late with sending out these payments, but you know what, it's fine, it's not too bad. So the whole entire online program costed $8,800 and then Yale gave me $8,900, I think, but don't don't tell them that. And usually um, through the Light Fellowship, they would send you more money because you would need money for like housing and the flight and food. But because it was only remote, they only gave enough money to cover the tuition of the program. It was still a good time though. So for that summer, I focused mainly on attending that summer program as well as other self-improvement things because of COVID. So I went to the gym, you know, made sure I learned about finances and educated myself, you know, started reading a little bit, you know, as inconsistent that journey is, but you know, you start somewhere. I was also trying to figure out my apartment life because there was like this whole entire issue with Yale housing. So I ended up moving into an apartment for that year with Yasi, my girlfriend, and two other awesome friends who are international students. Okay, so summer going into my senior year, I was like, okay, what else can I sort of like steal or milk from Daddy Yale right now? Like, mm. well, good thing Daddy was being very, very nice to me that summer. And Yale also has this program called the Domestic Summer Award. The Domestic Summer Award is basically a stipend that they give you if you are doing like an unpaid internship or program or something of that kind. There are specific stipulations they have to meet up, but because of COVID, they were extremely flexible. So basically they're like, hey yo, like as long as you can find like an unpaid opportunity in America, let me give you 4,000. I ended up using the Yale Domestic Summer Award for a hybrid position where I would go to New York sometimes and it was to help out this nonprofit organization that supported artists in all realms related to film, music, media, anything really. It was a great opportunity and because I would mainly stay at my apartment anyways, that $4,000 just like sort of stayed in my bank account to an extent. Over that summer, I also interned for a nonprofit film company and an unscripted TV and film production company. I was also a research assistant for Yale professors and was also working on both my theater studies and political science senior thesis projects. So that was a very, very busy time. Okay, is that sound in the background? Okay, why is that sound there? So for three summers, there was $7,300, $8,900, and then $4,000, which is roughly around 20K, which is, that's a lot of money, yeah. Despite being a low income student, I'm definitely still privileged to be able to have this opportunity and to access these resources in the first place. But I hope this was educational and it can help you be proactive and more scrappy with trying to find out these opportunities, no matter how big the cow is. Okay, I gotta stop with that analogy. In terms of this summer, post-grad life, I'll have another video on that soon, but if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and click on the notification bell icon. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.